song of myself. I celebrate myself and sing myself, and what I assume you shall assume. For every atom belonging to me as good belongs to you. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. My tongue, every atom of my blood formed from this soil, this air, born here of parents, born here from parents the same, and their parents the same. I, now 37 years old, in perfect health begin, hoping to cease not till death. Creeds and schools in abeyance, retiring back a while, sufficed at what they are, but never forgotten. I harbor for good or bad. I permit to speak at every hazard. Nature, without check, with original energy. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfumes. I breathe the fragrance myself and know it and like it. The distillation would intoxicate me also, but I shall not let it. The atmosphere is not a perfume. It has no taste of the distillation. It is odorless. It is for my mouth forever. I am in love with it. I will go to the bank by the wood and become undisguised and naked. I am mad for it to be in contact with me. The smoke of my own breath echoes ripples, buzzed whispers, love root, silk thread, crotch and vine, my respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart, the passing of blood and air through my lungs, the sniff of green leaves and dry leaves, and of the shore and dark colored sea rocks, and of hay in the barn, the sound of the belched words of my voice loosed to the eddies of the wind, a few light kisses, a few embraces, a reaching round of arms, the play of shine and shade on the trees as the supple boughs wag, the delight alone or in the rush of the streets or along the fields and hillsides, the feeling of health, the full noon trill, the song of me rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you practiced so long to learn to read? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, and you shall possess the origin of all poems. You shall possess the good of the earth and the sun. There are millions of suns left. You shall no longer take things at second or third hand, nor look through the eyes of the dead, nor feed on the specters in books. You shall not look through my eyes either, nor take things from me. You shall listen to all sides and filter them from yourself. I have heard what the talkers were talking, the talk of the beginning and the end, but I do not talk of the beginning or the end. There was never any more inception than there is now, nor any more youth or age than there is now, and will never be any more perfection than there is now, nor any more heaven or hell than there is now. Urge and urge and urge, always the procreant urge of the world. Out of the dimness, opposite equals advance, always substance and increase, always sex, always a knit of identity, always distinction, always a breed of life. To elaborate is no avail. Learned and unlearned, feel that it is so. Sure as the most certain sure, plumb in the uprights, well entreated, braced in the beams, stout as a horse, affectionate, haughty, electrical, I in this mystery, here we stand. Clear and sweet is my soul, and clear and sweet is all that is not my soul. Lack one lacks both, and the unseen is proved by the seen till so that becomes unseen and receives proof in its turn. Showing the best and dividing it from the worst age vexes age, knowing the perfect fitness and equanimity of things. While they discuss, I am silent and go bathe and admire myself. Welcome is every organ and attribute of me and of any man hearty and clean, not an inch nor a particle of an inch is vile and none shall be less familiar than the rest. I am satisfied. I see 
dance, laugh, sing. As the hugging and loving bedfellow sleeps at my side through the night and withdraws at the peep of the day with stealthy tread, leaving me baskets covered with white towels, swelling the house with their plenty, shall I postpone my acceptation and realization and scream at my eyes that they turn from gazing after and down the road and forthwith cipher and show me to a cent exactly the value of one and exactly the value of two and which is ahead. Trippers and askers surround me. People I meet, the effect upon me of my early life, or the ward and city I live in, or the nation, the latest dates, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors, old and new. My dinner, dress, associates, looks, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks, or of myself, or ill-doing, or loss, or lack of money, or depressions, or exaltations, battles, the horrors of fratricidal war, the fever of doubtful news, the fitful events, these come to me days and nights and go from me again. But they are not the me, myself. Apart from the pulling and hauling stands what I am stands amused, complacent, compassionating, idle, unitary, looks down, is erect, or bends an arm on an impalpable certain rest, looking with side-curved head, curious what will come next, both in and out of the game, and watching and wondering at it. Backward I see in my own days where I sweated through fog with linguists and contenders, I have no mockings or arguments. I witness and wait. I believe in you, my soul. The other I am must not abase itself to you, and you must not be abased to the other. Loaf with me on the grass. Loose the stop from your throat. Not words, not music or rhyme I want. Not custom or lecture, not even the best, only the lull I like, the hum of your valved voice. I mind how once we lay such transparent summer morning, how you settled your head athwart my hips and gently turned over upon me and parted the shirt from my bosom bone and plunged your tongue to my bare stripped heart and reached till you felt my beard and reached till you held my feet, swiftly arose and spread around me the peace and knowledge that pass all the argument of the earth. And I know that the hand of God is the promise of my own. And I know that the spirit of God is the brother of my own. And that all the men ever born are also my brothers and the women my sisters and lovers and that a Kelson of the creation is love and limitness, our leaves stiff or drooping in the fields, and brown ants in the little wells beneath them, and mossy scabs of the worm fence, heaped stones, elder, mulline, and pokeweed. A child said, what is the grass? Fetching it to me with full hands. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess it must be the flag of my disposition, out of hopeful green stuff woven. Or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners, that we may see and remark and say, whose? Or I guess the grass is itself a child, the produced babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic, and it means, sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones, growing among black folks as among whites. Canuck, Tuckahoe, Congressman, Cuff. I give them the same, I receive them the same. And now it seems to me the bo most beautiful uncut hair of graves. Tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you are from old people or from offspring taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are, 
the mother's laps. This grass was very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths. Oh, I perceive after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hints about the dead young men and women, and the hints about old men and mothers and the offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there really is no death. And if ever there was, it led forward life, and it does not wait at the end to arrest it, and seized the moment life appeared. All goes onward and outward. Nothing collapses, and to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier. Has anyone supposed it lucky to be born? I hasten to inform him or her it is just as lucky to die, and I know it. I pass death with the dying and birth with the new washed babe, and I'm not contained between my hat and boots, and peruse manifold objects, no two alike and every one good. The earth good and the stars good and all their adjuncts good, I am not an earth nor an adjunct of an earth. I am the mate and companion of people, all just as immortal and fathomless as myself. They do not know how immortal, but I know. Every kind for itself and its own, for me, mine, male and female, for me, those who have been boys and that love women, for me, the man that is proud and feels how it stings to be slighted, for me, the sweetheart and the old maid, for me, mothers and the mothers of mothers, for me, lips that have smiled, eyes that have shed tears, for me, children and the begetters of children undrape. You are not guilty to me, nor stale, nor discarded. I see through the broadcloth and gingham whether or no, and am around, tenacious, acquisitive, tireless, and cannot be shaken away. The little one sleeps in its cradle. I lift the gauze and look a long time, and silently brush away flies with my hand. The youngster and the red-faced girl turn aside up the bushy hill. I peeringly view them from the top. The suicide sprawls on the bloody floor of the bedroom. I witness the corpse with its dabbled hair. I note where the pistol has fallen. The blab of the pave, tires of carts, slough of boot soles, talk of the promenaders, the heavy omnibus, the driver with his interrogating thumb, the clank of the shod horses on the granite floor, the snow sleighs clinking, shouted jokes, pelts of snowballs, the hurrahs for popular favorites, the fury of roused mobs, the flap of the curtain litter, a sick man inside born to the hospital, the meeting of enemies, the sudden oath, the blows and fall, the excited crowd, the policeman with his star quickly working his passage to the center of the crowd, the impassive stones that receive and return so many echoes, what groans of overfed or half-starved who fall sunstruck or in fits, what exclamations of women taken suddenly who hurry home and give birth to babes, what living and buried speech is always vibrating here, what howls restrained by decorum, arrests of criminals, slights, adulterous offers made, acceptances, rejections with convex lips, I mind them or the show or resonance of them. I come and I depart. The big doors of the country barn stand open and ready. The dried grass of the harvest time loads the slow drawn wagon. The clear light plays on the brown, gray and green intertinged. The armfuls are packed to the sagging mouth. I am there, I help, I came stretched atop of the load. I felt its soft jolts, one leg reclined on the other. I jump from the cross beams and seize the clover and timothy and roll head over heels and tangle my hair full of wisps. 
Alone far in the wilds and mountains I hunt, wandering amazed at my own lightness and glee. In the late afternoon, choosing a safe spot to pass the night, kindling a fire and broiling the fresh killed game, falling asleep on the gathered leaves with my dog and gun by my side. The Yankee clipper is under her sky sails. She cuts the sparkle and scud. My eyes settle the land. I bend at her prow or shout joyously from the dock. The boatmen and clam diggers arose early and stopped for me. I tucked my trouser ends in my boots and went and had a good time. You should have been with us that day round the chowder kettle. I saw the marriage of the trapper in the open air in the far west. The bride was a red girl. Her father and his friends sat near cross-legged and dumbly smoking. They had moccasins to their feet and large, thick blankets hanging from their shoulders. On a bank lounged the trapper. He was dressed mostly in skins. His luxuriant beard and curls protected his neck. He held his bride by the hand. She had long eyelashes. Her head was bare. Her coarse, straight locks descended upon her voluptuous limbs and reached to her feet. The runaway slave came to my house and stopped outside. I heard his motions crackling the twigs of the woodpile through the swung half door of the kitchen. I saw him limpsy and weak and went where he sat on a log and led him in and assured him and brought him water and filled the tub for his sweated body and bruised feet and gave him a room that entered from my own and gave him some coarse clean clothes and remember perfectly well his revolving eyes and his awkwardness and remember putting plasters on the galls of his neck and ankles. He stayed with me a week before he was recuperated and passed north. I had him sit next to me at table. My firelock leaned in the corner. 28 young men bathed by the shore. 28 young men and all so friendly. 28 years of womanly life and all so lonesome. She owns the fine house by the rise of the bank. She hides handsome and richly dressed aft the blinds of the window. Which of the young men does she like the best? Ah, the homeliest of them is beautiful to her. Where are you off to, lady? For I see you. You splash in the water there, yet say stock still in your room. Dancing and laughing along the beach came the 29th bather. The rest did not see her, but she saw them and loved them. The beards of the young men glistened with wet. It ran from their long hair. Little streams passed over their bodies. An unseen hand also passed over their bodies. It descended tremblingly from their temples and ribs. The young men float on their backs. Their white bellies bulge to the sun. They do not ask who seizes fast to them. They do not know who puffs and declines with pendant and bending arch. They do not think whom they souse with spray. The butcher boy puts off his killing clothes or sharpens his knife at the stall in the market. I loiter, enjoying his repartee and his shuffle and breakdown. Blacksmiths with grimed and hairy chests environ the anvil. Each has his main sledge. They're all out. There is a great heat in the fire. From the cinder-strewed threshold, I follow their movements. The lithe sheer of their waists plays even with their massive arms. Overhand, the hammers swing. Overhand, so slow. Overhand, so sure. They do not hasten. Each man hits in his place. The Negro holds it firmly the reins of his four horses. The block swags underneath on its tied-over chain. The Negro that drives the long dray of the stone yard, steady and tall, he stands poised on one leg on the string piece. His blue shirt exposes his ample neck and breast and loosens over his hip band. His glance is calm and commanding. He tosses the slouch of his hat away from his forehead. The sun falls on his crispy hair and mustache, falls on the black of his polished and perfect limbs. I behold the picturesque giant and love him, and I do not stop there. I go with the team also. In me, 
the caresser of life were ever moving backward as well as forward slewing to Nietzsche's aside and junior bending, not a person or object missing, absorbing all to myself and for this song. Oxen that rattle the yoke and chain or halt in the leafy shade, what is it that you express in your eyes? It seems to me more than all the print I have read in my life. My tread scares the wood drake and wood duck on my distant and day-long ramble. They rise together. They slowly circle around. I believe in those winged purposes and acknowledge red, yellow, white, plain within me and consider green and violet and the tufted crown intentional and do not call the tortoise unworthy because she is not something else. And the jay in the woods never studied the gamut, yet trills pretty well to me. And the look of the bay mare shames silliness out of me. The wild gander leads his flock through the cool night. You honked, he says, and sounds it down to me like an invitation. The pert may suppose it meaningless, but I, listening close, find its purpose and place up there toward the wintry sky. The sharp-hoofed moose of the north, the cat on the house sill, the chickadee, the prairie dog, the litter of the grunting sow as they tug at her teats, the brood of the turkey hen and she with her half-spread wings, I see in them and myself the same old law. The press of my foot to the earth springs a hundred affections, they scorn the best I can do to relate them. I am enamored of growing outdoors, of men that live among cattle or taste of the ocean or woods, of the builders and steerers of ships and the wielders of ax and mauls and the drivers of horses. I can eat and sleep with them week in and week out. What is commonest, cheapest, nearest, easiest is me. Me going in for my chances, spending for vast returns, adorning myself to bestow myself on the first that will take me, not asking the sky to come down to my goodwill, scattering it freely forever. The pure contralto sings in the organ loft. The carpenter dresses his plank. The tongue of his foreplane whistles its wild ascending lisp. The married and unmarried children ride home to their Thanksgiving dinner. The pilot seizes the kingpin. He heaves down with a strong arm. The mate stands braced in the whaleboat. Lance and harpoon are ready. The duck shooter walks by, silent and cautious stretches. The deacons are ordained with crossed hands at the altar. The spinning girl retreats and advances to the hum of the big wheel. The farmer stops by the bars as he walks on a first day loaf and looks at the oats and rye. The lunatic is carried at last to the asylum, a confirmed case. He will never sleep any more as he did in the cot of his mother's bedroom. The juror printer with gray head and gaunt jaws works at his case. He turns his quid of tobacco while his eyes blur with the manuscript. The malformed limbs are tied to the surgeon's table. What is removed drops horribly in a pail. The quadroon girl is sold at the auction stand. The drunkard nods by the barroom store. The machinist rolls up his sleeves. The policeman travels his beat. The gatekeeper marks who passes. The young fellow who drives the express wagon. I love him, though I do not know him. The half-breed straps on his light boots to compete in the race. The western turkey shooting draws old and young. Some lean on their light rifles, some sit on logs. Out from the crowd steps the marksman, takes his position, levels his piece. The groups of newly come immigrants cover the wharf or levee. As the woolly pates hoe in the sugar field, the overseer views them from his saddle. The bugle calls in the ballroom. The gentlemen run for their partners. The dancers bow to each other. The youth lies awake in the cedar-roofed garret and harks to the musical rain. The wolverine sets traps on the creek that helps fill the Huron. The squaw, wrapped in her yellow-hemmed cloth, is offering moccasins and bead bags for sale. The connoisseur peers along the exhibition gallery with half-shut eyes bent sideways. As the deck hands make fast the steamboat, the plank is thrown for the shore-going passengers. The young sister holds out the skein while the elder sister winds it off in a ball and stops now and then for the knots. 
the one-year wife is recovering and happy give, having a week ago born her first child. The clean-haired Yankee girl works with her sewing machine or in the factory or mill. The paving man leans on his two-handed rammer. The reporter's lead flies swiftly over the notebook. The sign painter is lettering with blue and gold. The canal boy trots on the towpath. The bookkeeper counts at his desk. The shoemaker waxes his thread. The conductor beats time for the band and all the performers follow him. The child is baptized. The convert is making his first professions. The regatta is spread on the bay. The race is begun. How the white sails sparkle. The drover watching his drove sings out to them that would stray. The peddler sweats with his pack on his back, the purchaser higgling about the odd scent. The bride unrumples her white dress, the minute hand of the clock moves slowly, the opium eater reclines with rigid head and just opened lips. The prostitute draggles her shawl, her bonnet bobs on her tipsy and pimpled neck. The crowd laugh at her blackguard oaths, the men jeer and wink to each other. Miserable, I do not laugh at your oaths nor jeer you. The president is holding a cabinet council and is surrounded by the great secretaries. On the piazza walk three matrons, stately and friendly with twined arms. The crew of the fish smack pack repeated layers of halibut in the hold. The Missourian crosses the plains, toting his wares and his cattle. As the fare collector goes through the train, he gives notice by the jingling of loose change. The floormen are laying the floor. The tinners are tinning the roof. The masons are calling for mortar. In single file, each shouldering his hod pass onward the laborers. Seasons pursuing each other, the indescribable crowd is gathered. It is the fourth of seventh month. What salutes of cannon and small arms. Seasons pursuing each other, the plower plows, the mower mows, and the winter grain falls in the ground. Off on the lakes, the pike fish, fisher watches and waits by the hole in the frozen surface. The stumps stand thick round the clearing. The squatter strikes deep with his ax. Flat boatmen make fast towards dusk near the cottonwood or pecan trees. Coon seekers go through the regions of the Red River or through those drained by the Tennessee or through those of the Arkansas. Torches shine in the dark that hangs on the Chattahoochee or the Alamo at Altamaha. Patriarchs sit at supper with sons and grandsons and great-grandsons around them. In walls of adobe, in canvas tents, rest hunters and trappers after their day's sport. The city sleeps and the country sleeps. The living sleep for their time. The dead sleep for their time. The old husband sleeps by his wife and the young husband sleeps by his wife. And these tend inward to me and I tend outward to them. And such as it is to be of these, more or less I am. And of these, one and all, I weave the song of myself. I am of old and young, of the foolish as much as the wise, regardless of others, ever regardful of others, maternal as well as paternal, a child as well as a man, stuffed with the stuff that is coarse and stuffed with the stuff that is fine one of the nation of many nations, the smallest the same and the largest the same, a southerner soon as a northerner, a planter nonchalant and hospital down by the Okani I live, a Yankee bound by my own way ready for trade, my joints the limberest joints on the earth and the sternest joints on the earth, a Kentuckian walking the veil of the Elkhorn in my deerskin leggings, a Louisianan or a Georgian, a boatman over lakes or bays or along coasts, a Hoosier, a Badger, a Buckeye, at home on Canadian snowshoes or up in the bush, or with fishermen off Newfoundland, at home in the fleet of ice boats, sailing with the rest and tacking, at home on the hills of Vermont or in the woods of Maine or on the Texan ranch, comrade of Californians, comrade of free Northwesterners loving their big proportions, Comrade of raftsmen and coalmen, comrade of all who shake hands, and welcome to drink and meet. A learner with the simplest, a teacher of the thoughtfulest. A novice beginning, yet experience of myriads of seasons, of every hue and cast am I, of every rank and religion. A farmer, mechanic, 
artist, gentleman, sailor, Quaker, prisoner, fancy man, rowdy, lawyer, physician, priest. I resist anything better than my own diversity. Breathe the air, but leave plenty after me. And am not stuck up and am in my place. The moth and the fish eggs are in their place. The bright suns I see and the dark suns I cannot see are in their place. The palpable is in its place and the impalpable is in its place. These are really the thoughts of all men in all ages and lands. They are not original with me. If they are not yours as much as mine, they are nothing or next to nothing. If they are not the riddle and the untying of the riddle, they are nothing. If they are not just as close as they are distant, they are nothing. This is the grass that grows wherever the land is and the water is. This is the common air that bathes the globe. With music strong, I come with my cornets and my drums. I play not marches for accepted victors only. I play marches for conquered and slain persons. Have you heard that it was good to gain the day? I also say that it is good to fall. Battles are lost in the same spirit in which they are won. I beat and pound for the dead. I blow through my embouchures my loudest and gayest for them. Vivas to those who have failed and to those whose war vessels sank in the sea, and to those themselves who sank in the sea, and to all generals that lost engagements, and all overcome heroes, and the numberless unknown heroes equal to the greatest heroes known. This is the meal equally set. This is the meat for natural hunger. This is for the wicked, just the same as the righteous, that make appointments with all. I will not have a single person slighted or left away. The kept woman, sponger, thief are hereby invited. The heavy-lipped slave is invited. The venerable is invited. There shall be no difference between them and the rest. This is the press of a bashful hand. This is the float and odor of hair. This is the touch of my lips to yours. This is the murmur of yearning. This is the far off depth and height reflecting my own face. This is the thoughtful merge of myself and the outlet again. Do you guess I have some intricate purpose? Well, I have. For the fourth month showers have and the mica on the side of a rock has. Do you take it I would astonish? Does the daylight astonish? Does the early red start twittering through the woods? Do I astonish more than they? This hour, I tell things in confidence. I might not tell everybody, but I will tell you. Who goes there? Hankering, gross, mystical, nude? How is it I extract strength from the beef I eat? What is a man, anyhow? What am I? What are you? All I mark as my own soul, you shall offset it with your own. Else it were time lost listening to me. I do not snivel that snivel the world over, that months are vacuums and the ground but wallow and filth. Whimpering and truckling fold with powers for invalids, conformity goes to the fourth removed. I wear my hat as I please indoors or out. Why should I pray? Why should I venerate and be ceremonious? Having pried through the strata, analyzed to a hair, counseled with doctors and calculated close, I find no sweeter fat than sticks to my own modes. In all people, I see myself, none more and not one a barley corn less. And the good or bad I say of myself, I say of them. I know I am solid and sound. To me, the converging objects of the universe perpetually flow. All are written to me, and I must get what the writing means. I know I am deathless. I know this orbit of mine cannot be swept by a carpenter's compass. I know I shall not pass like a child's charlicue cut with a burnt stick at night. I know I am august. I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate myself or to be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I reckon I behave no prouder than the level I plant my house by, after all. I exist as I am. That is enough. 
If no other in the world could be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. One world is aware and by far the largest to me, and that is myself. And whether I come to my own today or in 10,000 or in 10 million years, I can cheerfully take it now or with equal cheerfulness, I can wait. My foothold is tenoned and mortised in granite. I laugh at what you call dissolution and I know the amplitude of time. I am the poet of the body, and I am the poet of the soul. The pleasures of heaven are with me, and the pains of hell are with me. The first I graft and increase upon myself, the latter I translate into a new tongue. I am the poet of the woman, the same as the man, and I say it is as great to be a woman as to be a man, and I say there is nothing greater than the mother of men. I chant the chant of dilation or pride. We have had duckling and depreciating about enough. I show that size is only development. Have you outstripped the rest? Are you the president? It is a trifle. They will more than arrive there, every one, and still pass on. I am he that walks with the tender and growing night. I call to the earth and sea half held by the night. Press close, bare-bosomed night. Press close, magnetic, nourishing night. Night of south winds, night of the large few stars, still nodding night, mad, naked summer night. Smile, O voluptuous, cool-breathed earth, earth of the slumbering and liquid trees, earth of departed sunset, earth of the mountains misty-topped, earth of the vitreous pour of the full moon just tinged with blue, earth of the shine and dark mottling the tide of the river, earth of the limpid gray clouds of brighter and clearer for my sake, far swooping elbowed earth, rich apple-blossomed earth, smile for your lover comes. Prodigal, you have given me love. Therefore, I to you give love. Oh, unspeakable, passionate love. You see, I resign myself to you also. I guess what you mean. I behold from the beach your crooked inviting fingers. I believe you refuse to go back without feeling of me. We must have a turn together. I undress, hurry me out of sight of the land, cushion me soft, rock me in billowy drowse, dash me with amorous wet, I can repay you. Sea of stretched ground swells, sea breathing broad and convulsive breaths, sea of the brine of life and of unshoveled yet always ready graves, howler and scooper of storms, capricious and dainty sea. I am integral with you. I too am one phase and of all phases. Partaker of influx and efflux, I extoller of hate and conciliation. Extoller of amies and those that sleep in each other's arms. I am he attesting sympathy. Shall I make my list of things in the house and skip the house that supports them? I am not the poet of goodness only. I do not decline to be the poet of wickedness also. What blurt is this about virtue and about vice? Evil propels me, and reform of evil propels me, I stand indifferent. My gate is no fault finders or rejecters gate. I moisten the roots of all that has grown. Did you fear some scrofula out of the unflagging pregnancy? Did you guess the celestial laws are yet to be worked over and rectified? I find one side a balance and the antipodal side a balance. Soft doctrine as steady help as stable doctrine. Thoughts and deeds of present are roused and early start. This minute that comes to me over the past decillions, there is no better than it and now. What behaved well in the past or behaves well today is not such a wonder. The wonder is always and always how there can be a mean man or an infidel. Endless unfolding of words of ages and mine, a word of the modern, the word in mass. A word of the faith that never balks. Here or henceforward, it is all the same to me. 
I accept time absolutely. It alone is without flaw. It alone rounds and completes all. That mystic baffling wonder alone completes all. I accept reality and dare not question it. Materialism first and last imbuing. Hurrah for positive science. Long live exact demonstration. Fetch stone crop mixed with cedar and branches of lilac. This is the lexographer. This is the chemist. This made a grammar of the old cartouches. These mariners put the ship through dangerous unknown seas. This is the geologist. This works with the scalpel. And this is a mathematician. Gentlemen, to you the first honors always. Your facts are useful, and yet they are not my dwelling. I by enter by them to an area of my dwelling. Less the reminders of properties told my words, and more the reminders they of life untold, and of freedom and extrication, and make short account of neuters and geldings and favor men and women fully equipped, and beat the gong of revolt, and stop with fugitives and them that plot and conspire. Walt Whitman, a cosmos of Manhattan the sun, turbulent, fleshy, sensual, eating, drinking, and breeding. No sentimentalist, no stander above men and women or apart from them, no more modest than immodest. Unscrew the locks from the doors. Unscrew the doors themselves from their jams. Whoever degrades another degrades me. And whatever is done or said returns at last to me. Through me, the afflatus surging and surging. Through me, the current and index. I speak the password primeval. I give the sign of democracy. By God, I will accept nothing which all cannot have their counterpart of on the same terms. Through me, many long, dumb voices, voices of the interminable generation of prisoners and slaves, voices of the diseased and despairing and of thieves and dwarves, voices of cycles of preparation and accretion and of the threads that connect the stars, and of the wombs and of the father stuff, and of the rights of them that the others are down upon, of the deformed, trivial, flat, foolish, despised, fog in the air, beetles rolling balls of dung. Through me forbidden voices, voices of sexes and lusts, voices veiled, and I remove the veil, voices indecent by me clarified and transfigured. I do not press my fingers across my mouth. I keep as delicate around the bowels as around the head and heart. Copulation is no more rank to me than death is. I believe in the flesh and the appetites. Seeing, hearing, feeling are miracles, and each part and tag of me is a miracle. Divine am I inside and out, and make holy whatever I touch or am touched from. The scent of these armpits aroma finer than prayer. This head more than churches, Bibles, and all of the creeds. If I worship one thing more than another, it shall be the spread of my own body or any part of it, translucent mold of me, it shall be you. Shaded ledges and rests, it shall be you. Firm masculine culture, it shall be you. Whatever goes to the tilth of me, it shall be you. You, my rich blood, your milky stream, pale strippings of my life, breast that presses against other breasts, it shall be you. My brain, it shall be your occult convulsions. Root of washed sleet, flag, timorous pond snipe, nest of guarded duplicate eggs, it shall be you. Mixed tussled hay of head, beard, brawn, it shall be you. Trickling sap of maple, fiber of manly wheat, it shall be you. Sun so generous, it shall be you. Vapors lighting and shading my face, it shall be you. You sweaty brooks and dews, it shall be you. Winds whose soft tickling genitals rub against me, it shall be you. Broad muscular fields, branches of live oak, loving lounger in my winding paths, it shall be you. Hands I have taken, face I have kissed, mortal I have ever touched, it shall be you. I dote on myself. There is that lot of me and also luscious. Each moment and whatever happens thrills me with joy. 
I cannot tell how my ankles bend, nor whence the cause of my faintest wish, nor the cause of the friendship I emit, nor the cause of the friendship I take again. That I walk up my stoop, I pause to consider if it may really be a morning glory at my window satisfies me more than the metaphysics of books. To behold the daybreak. The little light fades on the immense and diaphanous shadows. The air tastes good to my palate. The hefts of the moving world at innocent gambles, silently rising, freshly exuding, scooting obliquely high and low. Something I cannot see puts upward libidinous prongs, seas of bright juice suffuse heaven. The earth by the sky stayed with the daily close of their junction, the heaved challenge from the east, that moment over my head, the mocking taunt, see then whether you shall be master. Dazzling and tremendous how quick the sunrise would kill me if I could not now and always send sunrise out of me. We also ascend dazzling and tremendous as the sun. We found our own, oh my soul, in the calm and cool of the daybreak. My voice goes after what my eyes cannot reach. With the twirl of my tongue, I encompass worlds and volumes of worlds. Speech is the twin of my vision. It is unequal to measure myself. It provokes me forever. It says sarcastically, Walt, you contain enough. Why don't you let it out then? Come now. I will not be tantalized. You conceive too much of articulation. Do you know, not know, O oh speech, how the buds beneath you are folded, waiting in gloom, protected by frost, the dirt receding before my prophetical screams, I underlining causes to balance them at last, my knowledge, my live parts, it keeping tally with the meaning of all things, happiness, which whoever hears me let him or her set out in search of this day. My final merit, I refuse you. I refuse putting from me what I really am. Encompass worlds but never try to encompass me. I crowd your sleekest and best by simply looking toward you. Writing and talk do not prove me. I carry the plenum of proof and everything else in my face. With the hush of my lips, I wholly confound the skeptic. Now I will do nothing but listen, to accrue what I hear into this song, to let sounds contribute toward it. I hear bravuras of birds, bustle of growing wheat, gossip of flames, clack of sticks cooking my meals. I hear the sound I love, the sound of the human voice. I hear all sounds running together, combined, fused, or following, sounds of the city and sounds out of the city, sounds of the day and night, Talkative young ones to those that like them, the loud laugh of work people at their meals. The angry bass of disjointed friendship, the faint tones of the sick, the judge with hands tight to the desk, his pallid lips pronouncing a death sentence, the heave-yo of the stevedores unlading ships by the wharves, the refrain of the anchor lifters, the ring of alarm bells, the cry of fire, the whir of strift, swift streaking engines and horse carts with premonitory tinkles and colored lights, the steam whistle, the solid roll of the train of approaching cars, the slow march played at the head of the association, marching two and two. They go to guard some corpse. The flag tops are draped with black muslin. I hear the violin cello. Tis the young man's heart complaint. I hear the keyed cornet, it glides quickly in through my ears, it shakes mad sweet pangs through my belly and breast. I hear the chorus, it is a grand opera. Ah, this indeed is music, this suits me. A tenor, large and fresh as the creation, fills me. This orbic flex of his mouth is pouring and filling me full. I hear the trained soprano, what work with hers is this? The orchestra whirls me wider than Uranus flies. It wrenches such ardors from me I did not know I possessed them. It sails me. I dab with bare feet. They are licked by the indolent waves. I am cut by bitter and angry hail. I lose my breath. Steeped amid honeyed morphine, my windpipe throttles and fakes of death. At length let up again to feel the puzzle of puzzles and that we call being. 
To be in any form, what is that? Round and round we go, all of us, and ever come back thither. If nothing lay more developed in the quahong of its callous shell were enough. Mine is no callous shell. I have instant conductors all over me, whether I pass or stop. They seize every object and lead it harmlessly through me. I merely stir, press, feel with my fingers, and am happy. To touch my person to someone else's is about as much as I can stand. Is this then a touch, quivering me to a new identity? Flames and ether making a rush for my veins, treacherous tip of me reaching and crowding to help them. My flesh and blood playing out, lightning to strike what is hardly different from myself. On all sides, purient, provokers stiffening my limbs, straining the udder of my heart for its withheld drip, behaving licentious toward me, taking no denial, depriving me of my best as for a purpose, unbuttoning my clothes, holding me by the bare waist, diluting my confusion with the calm of the sunlight and pasture fields, immodestly sliding the fellow senses away. They bribed to swap off with touch and go and graze at the edges of me. No consideration, no regard for my draining strength or my anger, fetching the rest of the herd around to joy them a while than all uniting to stand on a headland and worry me. The centuries desert every other part of me. They have left me helpless to a red marauder. They all come to the headland to witness and assist against me. I am given up by traitors. I talk wildly. I've lost my wits, and I, nobody else, am the greatest traitor. I vent myself first to the headland. My own hands carried me there. You villain, touch, what are you doing? My breath is tight in its throat. Unclench your floodgates. You are too much for me. Blind, loving, wrestling touch, sheathed, hooded, sharp-toothed touch. Did it make you ache so, leaving me? Parting tracked by arriving, perpetual payment of perpetual loan, rich, showering rain, and recompense richer afterward. Sprouts take and accumulate, stand by the curb prolific and vital. Landscapes projected, masculine, full-sized, and golden. All truths wait in all things. They neither hasten their own delivery nor resist it. They do not need the obstetric forceps of the surgeon. The insignificant is as big to me as any. What is less or more than a touch? Logic and sermons never convince the damp of the night drives deeper into my soul. Only what proves itself to every man and woman is so. Only what nobody denies is so. A minute and a drop of me settle my brain. I believe the soggy clods shall become lovers and lamps. And a compend of compends is the meat of a man or woman. And a summit and flower there is the feeling they have for each other and they are branched boundlessly out of that lesson until it becomes omnific, and until one and all shall delight us, and we them. I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, and the pismire is equally perfect, and a grain of sand and the egg of the wren, and the tree toad is a chef hors d'oeuvre for the highest, and the running blackberry would adorn the parlors of heaven, and the narrowest hinge in my hand puts to scorn all machinery, and the cow crunching with depressed head surpasses any statue, and a mouse is miracle enough to stagger sextillions of infidels. For I find I incorporate nice, coal, long-threaded moss, fruits, grains, esculent roots, and am stuccoed with quadrupeds and birds all over, and have distanced what is behind me for good reasons but call anything back again when I desire it, in vain the speeding or shyness, in vain the plutonic rocks send their old heat against my approach, in vain the mastodon retreats beneath its own powdered bones, in vain objects stand leagues off and assume manifold shapes, in vain the ocean setting in hollows, and the great monsters lying low in vain, the buzzard houses herself with the sky in vain, the snake slides through the creepers and logs in vain, 
The elk takes to the inner passes of the woods in vain. The razor-billed auk sails far north to Labrador. I follow quickly. I ascend to the nest in the fissure of the cliff. I think I could turn and live with animals. They're so placid and self-contained. I stand and look at them long and long. They do not sweat and whine about their condition. They do not lie awake in the dark and weep for their sins. They do not make me sick discussing their duty to God. Not one is dissatisfied. Not one is demented with the mania of owning things. Not one kneels to another nor to his kind that lived thousands of years ago. Not one is respectable or unhappy over the whole earth. So they show their relations to me, and I accept them. They bring me tokens of myself. They evince them plainly in their possession. I wonder where they get those tokens. Did I pass that way huge times ago and negligently drop them? Myself moving forward then and now and forever, gathering and showing more always and with velocity, infinite and omnigenous, and the like of these among them. Not too exclusive toward the reachers of my remembrancers, picking out here one that I love and now go with him on brotherly terms. A gigantic beauty of a stallion, fresh and responsive to my caresses, head high in the forehead, wide between the ears, limbs glossy and supple, tail dusting the ground, eyes full sparkling wickedness, ears finely cut, flexibly moving. His nostrils dilate as my heels embrace him. His well-built limbs tremble with pleasure as we race around in return. I but use you a minute, then I resign you, stallion. Why do I need your paces when I myself outgallop them, even as I stand or sit passing faster than you. Space and time, now I see it is true what I guessed at. What I guessed when I loafed on the grass. What I guessed while I lay alone in my bed. And again, as I walked the beach under the paling stars of the morning, my ties and ballasts leave me, my elbows rest in sea gaps, I skirt sierras, my palms cover continents. I am afoot with my vision by the city's quadrangular houses, in log huts camping with lumbermen, along the ruts of the turnpike, along the dry gulch and rivulet bed, weeding my onion patch, or hoeing rows of carrots and parsnips, crossing savannas, trailing in forests, prospecting, gold digging, girdling the trees of a new purchase scorched ankle deep by the hot sand, hauling my boat down the shallow river, where the panther walks to and fro on a limb overhead, where the buck turns furiously at the hunter, where the rattlesnake suns his flabby length on a rock, where the otter is feeding on fish, where the alligator in his tough pimples sleeps by the bayou, where the black bear is searching roots or honey, where the beaver pats the mud with his paddle-shaped tail. Over the growing sugar, over the yellow-flowered cotton plant, over the rice in its low, moist field, over the sharp-peaked farmhouse with its scalloped scum and slender shoots from the gutters, over the western persimmon, over the long-leaved corn, over the delicate blue flower flax, over the white and brown buckwheat, a hummer and buzzer there with the rest, over the dusky green of the rye as it ripples and shades in the breeze. Scaling mountains, pulling myself cautiously up, holding on by low, scragged limbs. Walking the path worn in the grass and beat through the leaves of the brush, where the quail is whistling betwixt the woods and the wheat lot. Where the bat flies in the seven-month eve, where the great gold bug drops through the dark. Where the brook puts out the roots of the old tree and flows to the meadow where cattle stand and shake away flies with the tremulous shutting of their hides, where the cheesecloth hangs in the kitchen, where the andirons straddle the hearth slab, where the cobwebs fall and festoons from the rafters, where the trip hammers crash, where the press is whirling its cylinders, where the human heart beats with terrible throes under its ribs, where the pear-shaped balloon is floating aloft, floating in it myself and looking composedly down, where the life car is drawn on the slip noose, 
where the heat patches pale green eggs than the dented sand, where the she-whale swims with her calf and never forsakes it, where the steamship trails hindways its long pennant of smoke, where the fin of the shark cuts like a black chip out of the water, where the half-burned brig is riding on unknown currents, where shells grow to her slimy deck, where the dead are corrupting below, where the dense starred flag is borne at the head of the regiments, approaching Manhattan up by the long stretching island, under Niagara, the cataract falling like a veil over my countenance, upon a doorstep, upon the horse block of hardwood outside, upon the race course, or enjoying picnics or jigs or a good game of baseball. At he festivals with blackguard jibes, ironical license, bull dances, drinking laughter, at the cider mill tasting the sweets of the brown mash, sucking the juice through a straw. At apple peelings, wanting kisses for all the red fruit I find. At musters, beach parties, friendly bees, huskings, house raisings, where the mockingbird sounds his delicious gurgles, cackles, screams, weeps, where the hay rick stands in the barnyard, where the dry stalks are scattered, where the brood cow waits in the hovel, where the bull advances to do his masculine work, where the stud to the mare, where the cock is treading to the hen. Where the heifers browse, where the geese snip their food with short jerks, where the sundown shadows lengthen over the limitless and lonesome prairie. Where herds of buffalo make a crawling spread of the square miles far and near. Where the hummingbird shimmers, where the neck of the long-lived swan is curving and winding. Where the laughing gull scoots by the shore, where she laughs her near-human laugh where beehives range on a gray bench in the garden half hid by the high weeds, where band-necked partridges roost in a ring on the ground with their heads out, where burial coaches enter the arched gates of a cemetery, where winter wolves bark amid wastes of snow and icicled trees, where the yellow-crowned heron comes to the edge of the march at night and feeds upon small crabs, where the splash of swimmers and divers cools the warm noon, where the Katie did works her chromatic reed on the walnut tree over the wall, through patches of citrons and cucumbers with silver wired leaves, through the salt lick or orange glade, under conical firs, through the gymnasium, through the curtain saloon, through the office or public hall. Pleased with the native and pleased with the foreign, pleased with the new and old, pleased with the homely woman as well as the handsome pleased with the Quakeress as she puts off her bonnet and talks melodiously, pleased with the tune of the choir of the whitewashed church, pleased with the earnest words of the sweating Methodist preacher impressed seriously at the camp meeting, looking in at the shop windows of Broadway the whole forenoon, flatting the flesh of my nose on the thick plate glass, wandering the same afternoon with my face turned up to the clouds or down a lane or along the beach my right and left arms round the sides of two friends and I in the middle, coming home with the silent and dark-cheeked bush boy. Behind me he rides at the drape of the day. Far from the settlements, studying the prints of animals' feet or the moccasin print by the cot of the hospital reaching lemonade to a feverish patient. Nigh the coffined corpse when all is still examining with a candle, voyaging to every port to dicker and adventure, hurrying with the modern crowd as eager and fickle as any. Hot toward one I hate, ready in my madness to knife him, solitary at midnight in my backyard, my thoughts gone from me a long while, walking the old hills of Judea with the beautiful, gentle God by my side, speeding through space, speeding through heaven and the stars, speeding amid the seven satellites and the broad ring and the diameter of 80,000 miles speeding with tailed meteors, throwing fireballs like the rest, carrying the crescent child that carries its own full mother in its belly, storming, enjoying, planning, loving, cautioning, backing and filling, appearing and disappearing. I tread day and night such roads. I visit the orchards of spheres and look at the product and look at quintillions ripened and look at quintillions green. I fly those flights of a fluid and swallowing soul. My course runs below the soundings of plummets. I help myself to material and immaterial. No guard can shut me off, no law prevent me. I anchor my ship for a little while only. 
My messengers continually cruise away or bring their returns to me. I go hunting polar furs and the seal, leaping chasms with a pike-pointed staff, clinging to topples of brittle and blue. I ascend to the fore truck. I take my place late at night in the crow's nest. We sail the Arctic Sea. It is plenty light enough. Through the clear atmosphere, I stretch round on the wonderful beauty. The enormous masses of ice pass me, and I pass them. The scenery is plain in all directions. The white-topped mountains show in the distance. I fling out my fancies toward them. We are approaching some great battlefield in which we are soon to be engaged. We pass the colossal outposts of the encampment. We pass with still feet and caution. Or we are entering by the suburbs some vast and ruined city. The blocks and fallen architecture more than all the living cities of the globe. I am a free companion. I bivouac by invading watchfires. I turn the bridegroom out of bed and stay with the bride myself. I tighten her all night to my thighs and lips. My voice is the wife's voice, the screech by the rail of the stairs. They fetch my man's body, dripping and drowned. I understand the hearts of heroes, the courage of present times and of all times, how the skipper saw the crowded and rudderless wreck of the steamship and death chasing it up and down the storm how he knuckled tight and gave not back an inch and was faithful of days and faithful of nights and chalked in large letters on a board be of good cheer we will not desert you how he followed with them and tacked with them three days and would not give it up how he saved the drifting company at last how the lank loose gowned women looked when boated from the side of their prepared graves how the silent old-faced infants and the lifted sick and the sharp-lipped unshaved men all this i swallow it tastes good. I like it well. It becomes mine. I am the man. I suffered. I was there. The disdain and calmness of martyrs, the mother of old condemned for a witch burnt with dry wood, her children gazing on. The hounded slave that flags in the race, leans by the fence, blowing covered with sweat. The twinges that sting like needles his legs and neck, the murderous buckshot and the bullets, all these I feel or am. I am the hounded slave. I wince at the bite of the dogs. Hell and despair are upon me. Crack and again crack the marksmen. I clutch the rails of the fence. My gore dribs thinned with the ooze of my skin. I fall on the weeds and stones. The riders spur their unwilling horses, haul close, taunt my dizzy ears, and beat me violently over the head with whipstocks. Agonies are one of my changes of garments. I do not ask the wounded person how he feels. I myself become the wounded person. My hurts turn livid upon me as I lean on a cane and observe. I am the mashed fireman with breastbone broken. Tumbling walls buried me in their debris. Heat and smoke I inspired. I heard the yelling shouts of my comrades. I heard the distant click of their picks and shovels. They have cleared the beams away. They tenderly life me forth. I lie in the night air in my red shirt. The pervading hush is for my sake. Painless after all, I lie exhausted, but not so unhappy. White and beautiful are the faces around me. The heads are bared of their fire caps. The kneeling crowd fades with the light of the torches. Distant and dead resuscitate. They show as the dial or move as the hands of me. I am the clock myself. I am an old artillerist. I tell of my fort's bombardment. I am there again. Again the long roll of the drummers. Again the attacking cannon, mortars. Again to my listening ears the cannon responsive. I take part, I see, I hear the whole, the cries, curses, roar, the plaudits for well-aimed shots. The ambulanza slowly passing, trailing its red drip, workmen searching after damages, making indispensable repairs. The fall of grenades through the rent roof, the fan-shaped explosion, the whiz of limbs, heads, stone, wood, iron, high in the air. Again gurgles the mouth of my dying general. He furiously waves with his hand. He gasps through the clot, mind not me, mind the entrenchments. <laughs>